Welcome to the Coalition for Networked Information podcast. I'm Jerry Bain for Educause, and on this episode, we feature a conversation with Allison Hitchens. She's the Associate University Librarian for Collections, Technology, and Scholarly Communication at the University of Waterloo. You can find more conversations from the CNI meetings by visiting the Educause Review website at er.educause.edu. Here's our conversation. So you're here presenting a project briefing, and um, it's about bringing the research communities together. And could we start with talking about the tri-agency and what that is and how that is in relation to these conversations that we're going to talk about? Um, Sure. So for those not familiar with the Canadian environment, uh, we have three uh, main federal research funding agencies, which are... SHRC, NSERC, and CIHR, um, so basically covering across all the, the disciplines. And they, when they coordinate together on whether policy, guidelines, um, things like that, uh, that come out as the tri-agency. When right. we, so when you hear the tri-agency, it's referring to those three agencies. And they have coordinated on policies. And the past that have affected us here in libraries, they had an open access policy that came out in uh, 2015, they had a tri-agency statement of principles on digital data management that came out a f- number of years ago. And then finally, in 2021, they came out with their research data management um, policy. This is a government agency, obviously. Right. Are you guys privy to some of the ways they come up with the policies that you need to adhere to? There's usually consultation. Now, this is our Office of Research are the ones that are in most contact with the tri-agencies and, and, and have, you know, point people for mm-hmm. ongoing conversations. Um, but they quite often are doing community outreach and consultation. So right now, for example, they're in the middle of taking a look at their tri-agency open access policy. They have a consultation period open. They've done a survey out to researchers. They'll be doing some other feedback when the they had a draft RDM policy at one point and then looked to the community for uh, feedback. So I know that there's there's stuff like consultation that is involved along the way. So can you talk a little bit about how you became involved in what seems like, um, I I don't want to jump ahead here, but maybe you can control the narrative on this, how you got involved with creating some of these more communal and collaborative conversations Mm -hmm. with the research community. So I would say in libraries um, in Canada, we have the Canadian Association of Research Libraries, or CARL, and CARL has been working on, I guess, coordination around research data management for a number of years, and they created, I don't know if organization is the right word, but they created the Portage Network, which is now part of the um, Digital Research Alliance of of Canada, Uh, but at one point it was was funded by the, the library community to begin with, and we started looking very early on at what are the things we need to do to help our researchers. And so they created the DMP assistant, which is hosted at the University of Alberta, so that we can help researchers with data management planning. They set up a network of experts with that kind of that thought of not everybody across the RDM library community can equally build up that expertise. And so let's get some groups looking at, say, curation and groups looking at at the DMP in different areas where we can kind of build up some expertise that can be used across. And then that's now part of um, a different organization. So it's, I think, in the library community, we also have a lot of consortia. So in Ontario, we're part of the Ontario uh, Council of University Libraries. And of course, there's other regional consortia. And so it's, I think, a kind of an automatic thing in libraries <laughs> to work, work together collaboratively on these things and knowing that we can't each work on it ourselves. I think the difference here within RDM is, of course, the libraries don't you know, own all of research data management. It's across the research life cycle. We have the Office of Research mm-hmm. doing their part, whether it's the and the kind of the grant funding or through the ethics board. We have um, IT uh, working on storage and other and advanced research computing. And so I think the difference here was we in our own institutions on the RDM, we'd already started having those collaborations across those different sectors of our institutions. And so when it came to this conversation, it was how to expand that community so it's not just the library mm-hmm. talking to itself, which we do really well, and mm-hmm. we have great communities, but making sure that those other perspectives are drawn into that community as well. And that yeah. is what brought about, it sounds like, um, sort of uh, a, a national conference that you you helped organize 
And can you tell us, I, I found this really interesting, can you tell us sort of the unique thing about yeah. this conference? Uh, I think what was interesting, and I, I'll have to give a bit of a shout out to Ithaca and S- SNR because we had seen, they had done a call um, for some research that they were doing on, around RDM and they were looking for cohorts from different institutions, but they were going back to kind of assess kind of the gaps in RDM and the research needs. Mm-hmm. And in Canada, because we had to build these institutional strategies in response to the, the tri-agency policy, we'd already done that gap analysis. Mm-hmm. So for some of us, it didn't necessarily make sense to join that cohort. But at the same time, we thought cohorts, that's a great, that's a great idea. How do we think about that concept here in Canada, how we might get the community together? And uh, SHRC, which is the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, has a connections grant. And so we reached out to a few people in the community. So it's beyond just Waterloo, um, our colleagues at um, Calgary and, and Ottawa and some other partners to say, is there a way we can use this concept of bringing together cohorts that have library, office of research, and IT, however that works at different institutions, and bring together people for conversation. And so that was our original grant was, we thought, oh, we'll have like 10 10 cohorts, Mm -hmm. so about 30 people plus some speakers and researchers, things like that. We got interest from about 33 institutions, Mm -hmm. and it seemed a shame to have to choose amongst them and stop down the conversation. So we were fortunate enough that the library and the Office of Research at Waterloo stepped up to increase our funding so that we could actually say, okay, yes, all of you can come. Right, we'll, that's like we'll 100 a hundred people. Big, or, or yeah, something. and we'll yeah. just have a bigger, um, a bigger conference. Uh, so, it, yeah, it was uh, uh, really exciting to see those so much interest, mm-hmm. people wanting to talk about their institutional strategies and how to implement them. Right, know? and I thought it was so interesting to bring you know libraries, uh, researchers, and IT together mm-hmm. into one thing. And were they speaking the same language? How did you corral these these people um, into getting productive conversation yeah. going? I think well, part of that's a lot of planning. We we really wanted to focus on conversation. We had some panels to set you know the stage, and we did also hear from researchers so that people could hear about the challenges that our, our researchers are are working on. Um, but we wanted most of the time to be around conversation, and so we did a bit of mi- mixture. So we had some opportunities where people could talk in a sense to each other. So we had. S- some conversations where, you know, the IT folks are sitting at a table together, Office of Research folks, library folks, and so on. But then we also made, mixed it up so that there were some conversations where, you know, if you're part of a large research institution that has a medical school, that's a table, and now you've got a mixture of group. Or if you're in more of a smaller university or college, that might be a, a table, and so on. And making sure you have guiding questions. But I do know that it's starting to learn from each other what piece do we play. So quite often in the libraries, when we think research data management, besides the beginning part, we think about published data. So what happens at the end of the research cycle? And I think for our IT colleagues, they're often helping our researchers with that active uh, data while they're still working on it and needing storage that's very transactional and, 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 and intensive as opposed to a, a repository. And so it's even getting some of that out on the table. When we talk about storage for research data, what the library is talking about and what IT is talking about might be different, different concepts, things, right? and we need, mm-hmm. we need to get that out there. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. What would you like folks to know and come away with in terms of ideas, uh, strategies for getting folks together mm-hmm. in solving problems? That we had really good response, not just an interest in coming to the workshop, but really good response that people found it to be a valuable experience. Mm-hmm. Partly the timing, obviously, as we all had just published our institutional strategies and now have to figure out what to do. Uh, So the timing worked, but also they did really appreciate the intersection, the fact that we had those different folks together, even if they're already talking with those folks at their own institutions, just as a community, didn't necessarily have that. And so... I think if people wanted to do something like this, there's interest out there and you don't necessarily have to do it in the same way in terms of having a, you know, we we decided on an in-person event. It was a day and a half. Uh, You can just as easily do this in Zoom with breakout rooms and find different ways to to do it. You don't have to have, you know, big catered events. You can do things more low-key. But that that opportunity to talk through challenges. And also uh, the other piece I was going to add is that we very specifically made sure 
that our participants were also hearing from researchers. So uh, most of the actual attendees were people who, you know, work in libraries, work in the Office of Research, work in IT, whether that's the central kind of campus IT or our faculty computing. But what we're t- the people we're serving are our researchers. And so we, we really consciously made sure we had a researcher panel um, where the researchers were talking to us about what they're doing with research data management or the, some of the challenges they made. And we very specifically made sure we had a voice around um, Indigenous research and in- Indigenous data sovereignty. So that's part of the picture, uh, too. So I think the other takeaway is to just be intentional about, I guess, the experience you want your participants to have and the types of things you think it's important for them to be thinking about and, and talking about as well. Is there anything uh, else that you'd like to share in terms of uh, this project or, or RDM in general that, that you've, you've been thinking about? Mm-hmm. Uh, One of the things we're trying to work on now, we had all this input and, from this event, and we're working on some sort of paper, we don't know what to call it yet, a discussion paper report, something will come out of it, but trying to bring together some of these ideas and some recommendations so people can watch for that. Um, we'll eventually, I think we're aiming for the fall to have, have that out. I think it's really important also for those folks that aren't um, aware of the Canadian context that it's been really important for us as a community that we have a lot of tools available that we're not having to reinvent at our institutions. So I mentioned that University of Alberta um, hosts the data management planning assistant, the DMP assistant. At the national level, um, the Alliance hosts two different data repositories, Furter and Borealis. They've worked on a data discovery system, uh, Lunaris, and the ability to have some of those systems in place that, that means we at Waterloo don't have to build or Guelph or Toronto, that you know we can make use of those. So building that strong community so we can collaborate where it makes sense and then just focus more on some of our local issues, I think that's been a really important part. We haven't solved that's it all. There's lots of stuff to do, sure. so many challenges, <laughs> but I think that's really a good foundation for us to work on. Well, and that's what I love about yeah. academia. The, you guys aren't trying to like steal each other's trade secrets. You're actually sharing knowledge yep. and building things so you uh, can collect that knowledge and, yep. and solve problems. Thank yeah. you. That's great. If there's anything else you'd like to add uh, about about this event. I guess the, I know the only thing we're trying to, to encourage people to um, kind of pick it up and, and we're not necessarily in a position right now to host another uh, event, but we're happy to share all the information, all of our planning, anything that helps someone else uh, mm-hmm. plan their own event, uh, to feel free to to reach out to on any of us that were involved. Um, I don't know if I mentioned the names of uh, some of the organizations that helped us, but in addition to University of Calgary and University of Ottawa, um, OCLC Research participated, Compute Ontario um, participated, the Alliance, and um, we had a representation from Shirk as well. So it really is something that you can kind of build that Build community not in terms of the participations, but also in terms of how to to run some of these events, and and um, it doesn't have to be taken all on your by yourself. Right? That's great. Well, yeah. I noticed the link for the event in um, in in your uh, your, your summary, and mm-hmm. I'll add that to the show notes so okay. can people kind of see what the program was and see what was yeah. going on, and and get in touch with you if they'd like. So, yep. thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate great. it. Thank you. That was Allison Hitchens from the University of Waterloo. And I'm Jerry Bain for Educause. Thanks for listening.